Hello, friends, and welcome to Your Daily Detroit. It's Thursday, May 12th, 2022. I'm Jer Stays. You know, the reality is there's a lot of inequity in our American system. It's been there since our founding. Sure, improvements have been made, but we're nowhere near there yet. And you can see it in our region, too. Short of a massive federal program to truly begin to level out the metaphorical playing field on a number of levels for African Americans and other groups, to help get wealth into communities, start businesses, and more, the work has to be done where it can. One of those areas is with access to loans. Namaj Driscoll, a Detroit native with CDC Small Business Finance, a nonprofit that's more flexible than a bank, joins me today to talk about a new program that doesn't involve traditional credit scoring to get black entrepreneurs access to what they need to compete. And they're already at work in the community. So give our conversation a listen. Afterward, if you've got thoughts, tell me what you think. DailyDetroit at gmail.com. Joining me virtually, Namaj Driscoll. He's a loan officer with Activate Detroit, a program that I'm excited to learn more about and, and get the word out to you all. Uh, Namaj, welcome to Daily Detroit. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Jar. I'm happy to be here. So Activate Detroit provides a service to get financing to people who are trying to do things, but in a very specific and unique way from what we're all used to, right? We're all used to the idea of, well, what's your credit score or this or that? But you all look at it with a different perspective, and, and, and that's really tied to your mission as well, right? Yeah, exactly. Let's kind of speak to that a little bit. Uh, Activate Detroit is actually the name of our uh, latest uh, lending program. Um, name of our company is CDC Small Business Finance. So we are a mission-driven lender. Um, also known as a community development financial institution. So we operate uh, quite differently than a bank. There are several CDC certified development companies and CDFIs out here. And um, now operating in the Detroit market, um, we wanted to, you know, be an additional resource to help solve some of the problems that uh, particularly African-American or black owned uh, small and micro businesses have uh, had uh, historically in obtaining financing for loan uh for uh, business projects. Yeah. And I mean, there are books on this subject, but for the uninitiated in case they're just tuning into the show for the first time, because we've talked to a number of people who uh, have been doing things in the city and doing things in communities of color that face a unique uh, stumbling box blocks and ones that are institutional as well. And so uh, can we talk for a minute just to set the table on, on that gap that's there? In implicit bias, institutional, um, racism. There's, there's a lot of things that have happened over the years that structurally have uh, held um, African-Americans uh, away from having a lot of the same opportunities um, where it comes to finance. And we've seen it most commonly in uh, like redlining, something most people are familiar with, with, uh, you know, being unable to, you know, purchase homes in certain areas and, and things of that nature. So um, Activate Detroit is a Another option for borrowers who need a little bit more flexibility. So the reason the program was created was is that we wanted to redefine what character is in lending. Um, so, you know, back in the day, you might be able to go to a, a bank and sit down with the president and they knew your family and, you know, all of those type of things. And you, you would have what's called a, a signature loan, so to speak. Right. Um but, you know, lending uh, these days, uh, you know, is largely based off of your credit score. So when we assess a borrower's uh, credit, we actually blind the credit score. So that's something that's unique about the Activate Detroit loan. Uh, no one sees the credit score at all. So when we look at the credit report, you know, of course, there may be some blemishes, late payments, things like that. Things happen. But we you know, work towards understanding the borrower's situation, their life story, what happened, and then what they've done to rectify the situation or, you know, what uh, can they do to, you know, move forward. So we just kind of get comfortable with those things because we know that um, some things that may have happened in someone's past is not always going to be telling of their future, especially when they, you know, have a business that they put a lot of sweat equity into um, and really have had like a demonstrated passion or ability or potential to, you know, succeed. So 
you know, we value those things and, you know, just give them a little bit of direction with our business advisory services and uh, provide them the financing that they need to uh, move their project forward. And what kind of level of financing does that usually look like, like dollar amounts? Yeah. So um, Activate Detroit is designed to go up to $100,000 as the maximum. So uh, for this type of lending, um, it speaks to the project that you you know have. So um, it could be used for working capital if you need a, a few months of you know business rent payments um, while you know that ramp up period starts. If you need to be able to pay you know for employees or to enhance your staff, equipment, um, inventory, um, you know, so a lot of those things can be used uh, through the loan program. I think about those of us with access to institutional wealth, and maybe not at the hundred thousand level, but at the ten thousand le- level or something like that, where it's oh, I know an uncle, or, you know, the joke is, oh, I've got a rich yeah. uncle, or, <laughs> you know, my parents or something like that. When you're dealing with communities that don't have any kind of institutional wealth, I mean, you can look at the the numbers, they're stark in the difference, even between, say, um, an African-American with a college degree versus a white person with no college degree. Like, the numbers mm-hmm. are hugely stark. Yes. It seems like uh, there could be a lot of change made in this smaller area. And I know a lot of press attention gets put towards the things that are millions of dollars and things like that. But if you want to build a small business community, I can tell you from personal experience as, you know, this is a small business access to a thousand dollars when you need it or 5,000 or whatever. uh, It can make the biggest difference in the world between whether or not you, you succeed or fail, or you're able to take advantage of opportunities in front of you. Absolutely. It's a, it's a life changing experience for uh, most who've been uh, kind of uh, fell through the cracks when it comes to the their ability to obtain finances. So, like you said, it's kind of a head start that uh, certain uh, communities and groups, you know, have had historically. So, when you're kind of, you know, uh, fighting from behind, um, you know, any little bit of uh, resources can help you move forward. And um, I also like to highlight that, you know, it's also a business advisory partnership. So um, CDC Small Business Finance, we have a complete business advisory team that includes a local business advisor. His name is Donnell Miles that works alongside with me. And the, the applicants get um, assistance with understanding their assumptions for revenue, their financial projections, um, cash flow management, marketing, a lot of those things before they actually get approved. And on the back end, after we fund the loans, uh, they also have a partnership with Business Advisory. Just complimentary check-ins to, you know, be an additional resource just to make sure things are going well or to be a helping hand. Well, and that's the thing. Sometimes you get into it and you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. Now, what kind of uh, stories have you had so far of deploying this or with the work that you've done uh, through CDC Small Business Finance? Because I could think of a listener or two uh, who would be skeptical. It's like, well, we're going to do something completely different. How how can that work? So kind of what is what are some of the projects you're working on? Yeah, absolutely. So um, one of the um, most notable projects that, you know, um, I can speak about is uh, Supreme Cafe. So um, what's nice about this one is this is um, a person who really embodies what Activate Detroit is about. So the owner is originally a, a caterer. So he has a small catering business. Um, you know, and he makes healthier foods or our favorite foods, but with healthier ingredients, right? So no high fructose corn syrup and a lot of the things that, you know, keep us in a bad position. So um, he worked really hard in growing his business and being able to serve the community because that's another thing that we value also. Um, so a lot of times you'll see him doing pop-ups, you know, serving the people in Detroit and a lot of times uh, just, you know, for the good at no cost. Uh, also, you know, working full time to be able to support himself outside of the business and also working, you know, in the school system. So um, he was able to leverage the Activate Detroit loan in addition to some grant dollars from Detroit's Motor City Match Program. And we allowed him to be able to get the equipment and inventory and things that he needed to launch his uh official storefront that should be opening uh, in June um, this year. So just in a few weeks here. So, um, you know, traditionally someone like uh, we've seen, he just wasn't as uh, bankable in a traditional sense. 
But it's just like, hey, this person has all of the pieces to the puzzle. They've, you know, earned revenue. They've demonstrated that they're committed to their own success. So that's when we're able to come in and just be a little bit more flexible uh, when it comes to the way that we look at um, underwriting as a whole. Do you happen to remember where his uh, place is located that's opening? Oh, yes. It's on uh, 18111 Wyoming. So it's uh, in the Detroit's uh, west side in the Bagley neighborhood. So oh, yeah. To speak. Yeah, it's called Supreme Cafe. Very. Mm-hmm. So what brought you to do this work personally? And what, bring, and what excites you about this work personally for you? I love that question. Uh, I've been in uh, finance uh, largely in Detroit and Metro Detroit for about the past 10 years now. And um, I've always uh, felt purpose in uh, connecting with um, minorities and, you know, people from the low to moderate income communities and people who, you know, also look like myself and um, those ways to help them grow and develop when it comes to financial acumen. So, you know, I started off as a personal banker You know, I've worked. uh, And so as a personal banker, the great thing is you get to experience everything from the business side of things, right? From the investment, retirement, um, checking and savings, um, home equity loans, like all of those key, you know, um, just foundational, you know, building blocks. So being seen as someone in the community that, you know, the customers or patrons turn to for, you know, advice, you know, it, it's, it's a great feeling. You know, it's just like, hey, I came to open up a checking account. Could you tell me a little bit more about you know, what should I do in this scenario? And these are things that I'm, you know, wasn't necessarily there to do. So just being able to, to share knowledge and just help move people forward, um, you know, in the work that I do is important. So, you know, with the small business community, it's definitely a need to be able to have access to capital financially and the intellectual capital when it comes to understanding your financial statements and, you know, a lot of the stuff that it goes in, you know, making these business decisions. So um, just a passion of mine to, to kind of give back to the community in my own little way. And um, this is the perfect way f- to do it. I think that financial knowledge piece is, is so crucial, especially when you're dealing with situations where, you know, if you, you, you come from a background that you don't talk about money or, mm-hmm. you know, my dad never had a credit card. Mm-hmm. You, you don't learn those things until you go out and seek it right now in a lot of, in a lot of challenging uh, neighborhoods and communities. And that, that knowledge, that basic knowledge, even some of the basic knowledge, even outside of, say, a program like this, I, I think it's so crucial to be able to be able to change your station in life even a little bit, no matter what you're doing. Mm-hmm. No, 100 percent. Yeah. No, knowledge is everything. And then the, the application of knowledge, you know, once you get it. So um, just being able to to be a, a relatable resource to, uh, you know, the people in the community is largely what I'm fueled by. So that's awesome to hear. All right. So people want to know more. Someone's listening. They want to get involved with this program. They think that they might be a fit. Mm-hmm. What can they do? I always tell people, for one, to uh, get familiar with our website, cdcloans.com. So, again, this is uh, CDC Small Business Finance. That's going to give you a lot of the background as to who we are as a you know community development lender. Um, now, to reach me directly, since I'm the loan officer uh, here in Detroit that's work, working on the project, um, you can always email me. Um, that's a great way to kind of get the conversation started. Uh, my email address is the letter N as in Namaj, last name Driscoll, D-R-I-S-C-O-L-L, at cdcloans.com. Real quick before we go, if you want to support what we're doing, consider joining us at patreon.com slash daily Detroit. Chrissy and Joel recently joined us, and it is much appreciated. Or get in touch to be a sponsor, dailydetroit at gmail.com. It'd be great to hear from you. With that, I'm Jer Stays. Tomorrow, Devin O'Reilly joins me. We have more details on the tower on the old Hudson site, flower days coming, and a whole lot more. So remember that you are somebody, and I'll see you around Detroit.